and welcome back to The Crochet Crowd and AllFreeCrochet.com. I have a treat for you in 2010 in the winter and we're going to start diving into the world of snowflakes. Yes, snowflakes. I'd like to introduce you to a brand new artist that I've just heard about but she's not new to the world. And she's Deborah Atkinson out of Denver, Colorado and she is known as the snow catcher and she has a beautiful blog her snowflakes are absolutely a dream and the editor from allfreecrochet.com contacted me to see if I could get filming rights in order to film some of her tutorials so on behalf of Deborah and allfreecrochet.com we'd like to introduce you on how to do the snowflakes now this is a, a two-part series so this is actually part two where we're gonna figure out how we're gonna make our snowflakes absolutely beautiful and this for example, will turn into something like this. Isn't that just white and near fancy right now? Now, you should see that this one here is a lot bigger than it should be. And the reason for I did that is that it's easier to follow in a tutorial if it's bigger. But the point being is that if you change your yarn hook or change your material and still follow her pattern, you'll end up with going from one size to the next really quickly very easily. Now when you do it a lot bigger it's going to actually be a little bit harder to make it solid. For example if I turn this now sideways and I want to be somewhat gentle to it you will see that it is completely flat. This is about a five day process so you can't actually just make this today and have it done like this today. So it's one of those ones that you have to go through and actually work your way through. My yarn choice of this year is Koigu Yarn and Koigu is actually a, a company that is only 30 minutes from my house and they specialize in doing hand painted yarn just like this. It is a high end yarn. You'll see it in Vogue Knitting and really high end magazines and they're magnificent. It is all hand painted. So you know a lot of people would expect your snowflakes to be solid white but you know what why not push it a little bit more over the edge by choosing a high-end yarn that is absolutely a dream to work with and when we're actually solidifying this thing and making it solid you know get out that fairy dust that complements it but make sure when you're actually going to sprinkle it that you're not going to cover it to the point where you can't see your nice fine stitch work in here so on behalf of Deborah Atkinson of the Snowcatcher in Denver Colorado and myself, Michael Selleck of The Crochet Crowd, and of course my friends at AllFreeCrochet.com. We'd love to take you on how to And do. she makes the most stunning snowflakes ever. Not only are you going to crochet them, but you can actually then make them hard, put some glitter on it, hang it from a tree, or from a mantle, or your window, or a ceiling, or a mobile. These things are absolutely fabulous, and I'm going to provide a link to be able to find her. So we're at the process now, we've done our snowflake and now it's time to make it hard. Uh, begin now to stretch it out. At this point you have, I'm going to move my directions out, you have what is, looks like a mess on your thing. So now in order to stretch this out and to make it hard you're going to have to obviously uh, work it out somehow. So how do you do it? So she suggests a pizza box or she suggests some kind of cardboard and I've just used the top of a photocopier box and what I want to do now is that I want to protect the top of the box and I want to get out my foil. Now you can use uh, plastic wrap, if not plastic wrap, but uh, plastic um, wax paper. The problem with wax paper is that you'll be able to see the design through it so it's uh, not as uh, nice to use because you might be missing some of the colors on some of the points. So what you want to do now is stretch it out onto your tin foil and the way I did it off camera just to practice is that I want the shorter edge to be at the tops here and so then if it does have to stretch that it doesn't going to stretch off the top of the box or just get a bigger box whatever's easier for you I guess and so now we want to stretch it out so I didn't tape down the the foil at all and that's because we're going to be using our friends the pins and so basically what we have to do in order to get the effect that she does on the website is that we still have to start stretching this at particular points. Now this uh, snowflake is a bit bigger than what it should be and the reason for it is that my yarn's a little thicker. So again, you're the artist. You get to decide exactly what you want to do. Now, what she suggests on here, and she has a horror story on her blog where some of her, um, her uh, after you have to apply the glue and there's a little bit of water in it, it actually makes the pins rust but that's only if the pins are really old. So I recommend that if you're doing this process, get some fresh pins that are cheap enough and you'll be able to go. So what I would probably do now is probably just stretching out the absolute, how, how big do you really want it? And just start stretching and just stick the pin down through the box, just like so, and it will hold it into position. So I do that there. 
and now I want to do the cross. So I want to kind of make it like the same. So if you're really anal retentive and you would prefer your uh, snowflake to be an equal distance, then get out the ruler and actually just do that or just do what I'm going to do right now. I'm just, I'm just going to eye it out. So I'm not going to film the entire me stretching this out and actually doing everything, but uh, I will pick up at certain points of this video and we can not talk about uh, decisions that are made down the road. So then, you know what, I might actually just get a ruler after all. Maybe I am that anal retentive. So I'll talk to you in a bit. So the next process, now that everything has been fastened down, we have to get some school glue. And you want to make sure that your school glue or that kind of glue is actually going to dry clear. So make sure you are looking for that. And you are going to add a few drops of water. I actually used a really tiny bit of water as per Deborah's instructions. And I'm really mixing it here because you do want the, the material to grab onto it. I'm also using a butter knife so that I can scrape off any extras if I have to and just to, just to kind of keep it even. And now it's the, I guess this is the fun part. I'm doing it uh, for the first time. And then what we're gonna do after that, once this is applied, is that we're gonna grab our sprinkles. So I got some sprinkles that complemented the color. because. And what we wanna make sure is that we don't sprinkle so many uh, sprinkles on there that you actually can't see your fabulous yarn work. Uh, and also to, I guess, some people have suggested maybe cornstarch to make this thing solid. And I just don't want my colors of the hand-painted uh, yarn to uh, be affected by uh, dipping this into something else. So I want really to remain clear. So let's uh, begin to do that. Okay, so now all the glue is now applied and now this is the point where you really want to make sure that um, you position everything so you can move things around if you have to. Um, yeah, overall I'm actually really happy. It takes longer to glue than I expected. It's kind of a pain to work around the, the pegs, but again, I'm really actually really happy with that. And When you're actually checking there, see I just missed a whole section right there. So it's a good opportunity just to really kind of position everything, see, make sure everything is saturated. And now it's up to us now to sit, let it sit for 24 hours and uh, let it harden up and then just to peel it off really nicely. So it was ba basically almost two to three hours to actually make this. Probably faster once I understood. And now it's the fun time now adding glitter. So let's uh, do that next. It's now the fun time and now we're just going to add glitter. We want to lightly dust it. We don't want glitter to the point where it's in clumps. So we're just going to just very carefully just let it shower on there. Oh my god. So I did a complimentary. Oh my god. I'm so loving this. Deborah from Colorado. This is already really fabulous. So, you know, I never thought, <laughs> I never thought that I would actually be able to sprinkle fairy dust. And I actually love it this much. So, you don't want so much glitter on there too that your craftsmanship of your yarn is gone. But, oh my god. You can even be creative with your glitter and add more other colors if you want to. So there so far. So now it's up to me to wait 24 hours and to see how this bad boy is going to fit. And now i got to find somewhere to put that without it spilling everywhere. Okay, it is day two and what I want to do now is that I want to start removing the pins. I started removing the pins with my hands but it's easier just to get a little pliers and I'm using uh, pliers from my jewelry kit. And now it's... I just kind of want to hold it's not completely like solid hard so what I want to do now is that I want to pull the pins out and then flip this bad boy over and then glue the other side of it just to okay so something I just learned is that I was trying to use the knife to kind of slide up underneath but what we want to do is unpeel this thing and it's better to be able to just to flex the 
foil back and to be able to do it that way than it is to slide the butter knife up underneath to separate it. So um, because there's a lot of sprinkles that are um, just sitting on the top there, um, this could be a little bit of a mess. So depending where you're working, you might end up with showering whatever the sprinkles. So um, that is your next step is to peel this bad boy. But you want to be uh, somewhat gentle as you don't want it to lose its shape. Um, it's not going to lose its shape and then I'm going to turn it over, glue it, and do the other side. Sorry, I'm going to turn it over, glue it, and um, that should be it for this project. Because so, it's not completely, and I think it's just because it's so big, is that it just needs the other side to be done before I'll be happy. So that's it for now. Let's keep on going. So that's now what it looks like now that I have not glued the other side, so that's why I want to glue it. You can see it's, it's still holding its shape pretty good, it's just a little bit too limp for my taste. So let's uh, begin to do that, and that's our next step. <laughs> 